With a history stretching back more than a century, Renault has created revolutionary designs and turned their automobile creations into international pop icons, enabling all of us to travel in style at an affordable price. But there are some cars that can't be bought at any price. And of course, these are the ones that tend to cause the biggest buzz. C'est l'objet de, de mobilité le plus passionnant qui soit. It's the supermodels of the car industry. C'est la haute couture de l'automobile. This is the story of Renault's ultimate spirit of innovation and style. This is the story of Renault's concept cars. The Principality of Monaco, home of glamour and playground of the super rich. Monte Carlo welcomes both fashionistas and sun-kissed terrace loungers, as well as those obsessed by everything four-wheeled. Today, over 40 exceptionally rare cars of timeless elegance have gathered in front of the world-famous Hotel de Paris to attend the Louis Vuitton Classic Awards. La creme de la creme of the automobile world has been brought together to the great excitement of the public. Oh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. But it's not only these vintage diamonds that are turning heads. Two rather unexpected guests have just arrived and are already creating quite a buzz. Super belle. J'achète. Fier de d'être française. Renault's 2010 concept car Désir and the 2001 Talisman. These Renault concept cars from two different generations have been invited to this prestigious event to illustrate the greatest of craftsmanship and innovation, values that are close to Louis Vuitton's heart. Louis Vuitton veut à tout prix porter un regard sur le futur aussi. Et donc les concept cars sont une manière de préparer l'avenir, de porter un regard sur le futur. All around the world, concept cars have become an essential part of the automotive industry and they are now the most popular guests at any motor show. Every car manufacturer is here to dazzle and amaze the public with their engineering and design acrobatics. Concept is uh, a way designers, manufacturers, trail their coats in front of a public. And the motor shows nowadays give, the, give them the opportunity to do this, just like this way, the same way as the City of London has become a laboratory for uh, you know, architectural shape making. The motor shows have recently become laboratories for uh, you know, the auto designers um, shape making and indeed the uh, discovery of new categories. But it all comes at a cost. A concept car, it's about a million euros. Euh, et ça implique euh, peut-être euh, une centaine de personnes parmi euh, 500 personnes qui travaillent dans un bureau euh, de recherche design. An enormous investment for any car maker. But as journalists, designers and automotive experts know only too well, this is certainly not a waste of money. It's an incentive for every car designer. You know, if you work for an exciting car company that lets you do whatever and they build your concept car, I mean, that's pretty amazing. Un concept car, c'est le rêve absolu. C'est euh, le plateau là où on, on se peut exprimer euh, le plus librement. Concept cars might be a contemporary idea, but looking into the future of mobility has been a human obsession that dates back centuries. But concept cars as we know them today only became a reality in the late 1930s, when General Motors design chief Harley Earl decided to try out some bold new automobile designs. Harley Earl was the first person to realise that if you added visual interest to a motor car, it might possibly increase sales. Another prime ingredient of sales leadership is design leadership, styling that builds eye appeal into the product. By 1938, Harley Earl's first dream car, the Buick Y-Job, was unveiled to the public. A new genre of automotive art was born. C'est une voiture extraordinaire. On la considère généralement comme le premier concept car. C'est c'est un show car. C'est une voiture qui aujourd'hui dans un salon ferait toujours l'attraction. Elle a des toutes petites roues. Elle a des roues de 13 pouces, qui à l'époque est rare. Les voitures ont encore des grandes roues. Elle a des phares rétractables. Elle a une ligne juste extraordinaire. But despite its good looks, the Y-Job was far from being just a catwalk queen. 
Ce qui est intéressant dans cette voiture, c'est que son créateur a roulé avec pendant des années. Ce n'était pas juste une voiture de salon, c'est une voiture qui roulait, qui fonctionnait pour de vrai. By the early 1950s, what started as a burgeoning segment of General Motors became an integral part of the business. And with the growing interest of the public in their innovation and dream cars, Harley Earl saw an opportunity to put on a show, the Motorama. Motoramas were sort of traveling road shows where they would display what we've now called concept cars, just test the public's reaction. Les concept cars qui étaient présentés sur les motoramas euh, étaient ultra profilés et euh, avaient presque des looks de fusée avec des réacteurs à l'arrière. C'est assez drôle parce qu'aujourd'hui, aucune voiture ne, ne possède un, un réacteur. Le grand public euh, américain était attiré par cette présentation euh, annuelle puisque euh, elles, étaient, euh, elles étaient décrites comme étant une vision de, de l'avenir et tout le monde est intéressé euh, à, à voir ce que sera demain. Et, et la mise en scène et la qualité de show, c'était euh, tout aussi bien, voire mieux que Broadway. D'année en année, ça a été un, un succès euh, colossal et vraiment absolument mythique. Quoi. While 50s America was falling head over heels in love with dream cars, France's automobile industry was still feeling the after effects of war. On est dans une époque de reconstruction, donc on démarre avec le plan établi par M. Pons. Renault a eu en charge de faire une toute petite voiture qui donc va être la 4 chevaux. Donc on est bien loin d'une grosse voiture qui fait rêver. Euh, et les autres constructeurs français aussi. Il fallait faire un petit véhicule pour redémarrer l'industrie euh, automobile. Despite an initial period of uncertainty and poor sales due to the ravaged state of the French economy, the 4CV became the most popular car in France. Even if Renault stayed true to its vocation of creating small popular cars, across the next decade, several design projects led to some futuristic and out of the ordinary looking one-offs, such as Project 108, a luxury six-seater saloon, and Project 900, a rather strange looking taxi prototype. But one of Renault's later pieces of automotive art was not only capable of raising eyebrows through its futuristic looks, but also through its performance. The Shooting Star. Unveiled on the Mont Lary track in 1956, it was a meteoric success. Une grande première mondiale. Le 22 juin, les représentants de la presse française et étrangère étaient conviés à faire connaissance avec l'étoile filante, voiture à turbine de la régie Renault. Built around a powerful turbine and equipped with aircraft-style stabilizers, the car was able to reach a speed of 220 km an hour without hesitation. Keen on developing the international image of Renault, Dreyfus, the new president, saw in the streamliner an even greater potential. The shooting star was to attempt to break the world record in America. L'étoile filante pour son premier essai se paya le luxe de battre avec 309 km à l'heure quatre records internationaux pour voitures à turbine toutes catégories. Et c'est ainsi que eh bien, euh, Renault a, a gagné son, son pari et ça a été extraordinaire pour la notoriété de Renault. On en a parlé partout euh, dans le monde. Setting a world speed record that still stands, Renault's avant-gardist speedster certainly turned heads. But Renault still needed to make cars that were practical and appealing to their customers. In 1961, witnessing changes in the tastes and aspirations of its clientele and willing to push the limits of automotive design, Renault created a new department. On a re recréé un, un, un vrai bureau d'études de style. À l'époque, on ne disait pas des designers, on disait des stylistes. Et donc, on a recréé un, un, un bureau de style chez Renault qui va aboutir à toutes les productions des années 60. The R8 with its bold design and the R16, which revolutionized the sleepy world of family cars, both perfect examples of the brand's new daring style. But by the 1970s, Renault's creative enthusiasm was drastically curbed. Well, like most other manufacturers, I mean, Renault had suffered in the 1970s from a lack of confidence brought about, you know, you know by the oil shock. It was felt in inopportune to express you know, ideas about, you know, you know, freedom, sex and style in an age when we weren't sure where our next few litres of, you know, gasoline were going to come from. After a decade of declining sales, Renault's then chairman and CEO, Raymond Levy, recruited designer Patrick Le Quemont in 1987 on a hunch that French design could re-energise the company. When uh, Patrick Le Quemont arrives chez Renault, um, 
on va justement substituer le nom de style euh, au nom de design. C'est-à-dire que le design devient le mot euh, qui qualifie euh, ce que va faire Patrick Lequemont avec ses équipes. A matrix management was set up, cutting edge technologies brought to the fore, and the workforce was doubled under his guidance. Now retired and described by his peers as one of the most preeminent designers in the world, Patrick Lequemont looks back at his exceptional 22 year long career at Renault. Dans toute euh, cette période, les, les concepts car ont été euh, un point haut euh, que j'ai vraiment euh, chéri. Quand euh, nous avons commencé ce, ce projet de, de, de concept car, euh, il y avait une, une volonté d'introduire, de, de réintroduire l'enchantement par rapport au produit. Et nous souhaitions apporter cette part de rêve euh, à l'automobile euh, parce que, eh bien, ma foi, l'automobile, c'est un, euh, un objet de rêve. Mais je pense qu'il a réalisé très rapidement qu'un concept car peut montrer la compagnie's ambition. Et c'est vraiment un communication tool. So he used this uh, at its full force. And of course, if you're a new design director, what better way to start than with a new concept car? And in 1990, after months of hard work, Patrick Le Quemont and his team unveiled the Laguna Roadster, a two-seater with no roof or windscreen. Nous souhaitions sortir un, un, un véhicule euh, associé à la passion automobile. Euh, il avait aussi euh, cette volonté de de montrer euh, euh, ce que pourrait être une voiture sportive euh, pour, euh, pour Renault. On a vraiment utilisé un moteur de, de, de haute performance. C'était un concept car qui en fait a, a annoncé une première orientation euh, stylistique euh, de la marque avec des formes douces. C'est vraiment une voiture euh, qui donne vraiment envie. C'est vraiment euh, une voiture euh, euh, qui, moi, m'a fait rêver quand je l'ai vue pour de vrai euh, au salon. Euh, et c'est quelque chose qui, euh, qui reste, même si effectivement elle n'a jamais existé pour de vrai. C'était un fantastique statement de sculpture, de sensualité. Et ça m'a revenu à certaines des routes sportives de Renault. Et ça a même eu un peu de spirit futuriste spirit in it. So it was a really a fantastic way to start. With the Laguna successfully boosting its sporty image, next Renault wanted Le Quemon to create a concept car completely different in its essence and nature, the Scenic. Donc c'est une réflexion qui s'est euh, appuyée essentiellement sur des études de marché qui faisaient apparaître qu'il y avait un manque pour euh, des clientèles comme des jeunes couples. Donc, euh, Scénic a été la concrétisation de ces attentes clientèles euh, nouvelles. Looking back at the original Scénic trend book, created by his team more than 20 years ago, Patrick Le Quemont reminisces on the birth of this remarkable concept. Euh, alors ce document, c'est euh, un carnet de tendances du concept car euh, Scénic. Euh, on le faisait pour chacun des projets. Ça crée une atmosphère globale. Il faut voir aussi, partout, on a les citations de clients. Un espace à vivre et pas seulement un moyen de locomotion. Les enfants ne sont pas des marchandises. Il faut aussi leur confort, leur coin à eux. Elle doit contenir à la famille, elle doit convenir à la famille et surtout aux enfants. On est vraiment en train de dessiner des voitures pour les clients. With the needs of their customers in mind and a growing appetite to revolutionize car design, Renault's team came up with a car that not only impressed with its exterior, but also with its interior. Chaque siège était des sièges individuels où chaque siège avait euh, euh, sa tablette et nous avions même poussé à l'extrême où chaque siège avait une couleur différente et chaque siège portait le nom d'un continent. C'est un véhicule qui a été fait vraiment en pensant à la famille et en pensant au bien-être en fait. Even though concept cars don't normally make it into full-scale production, the concept version of the Scenic had such an impact that Renault decided to launch this segment-busting family minivan onto the market in 1996. Cinq ans plus tard, eh bien, euh, un produit de série, euh, de grande série même, sortait puisque le véhicule a été vendu euh, je pense me souvenir de l'ordre de 350 à l'ordre de 350 véhicules jour, ce qui est euh, considérable. Et euh, euh, d'emblée a été un très très grand succès. What was interesting here was it's it's not just a, a new style of car, it's an entirely 
new category. The Renault Scenic uh, you know, became one of the most, which appeared first as a concept car, um, uh, became one of the most influential cars of all time. Aujourd'hui, nous en sommes dans sa troisième génération, euh, véhicule qui a créé un nouveau segment euh, en Europe et, et dans le monde et qui a permis euh, une très bonne rentabilité pour, pour Renault pendant de nombreuses années. Following the success of the Scenic, Renault unveiled two other very distinct concept cars. Zoom in 1992, an electric city runabout with retractable wheels and the spectacular Raccoon in 1993. Equipped with a twin turbocharged V6 engine and an all-wheel drive system, Renault's latest creation was a pure expression of stylistic freedom. C'est un véhicule futuriste et on est dans un véhicule qui pourrait être un véhicule lunaire. Donc euh, c'est un véhicule qui comporte pas mal d'innovations. On concentre dans un véhicule de rêve euh, un tas de un tas de technologies qui serviront ou qui ne serviront pas, mais qui disent, voilà, nous, on sait faire. C'est une folie, euh, pure et simple, euh, qui n'avait absolument aucune euh, intention d'avoir une traduction euh, en série. C'était tout simplement de, de montrer que, eh bien, au sein de cette entreprise euh, nationalisée, très sérieuse, que l'on savait aussi faire des, des choses un petit peu folles. But with Raccoon, Renault was not only pushing the boundaries of car design. Nous étions en plein dans le début de ce qui va devenir tellement important chez nous dans le numérique. Et donc nous avons pu présenter ce, ce véhicule avec euh, euh, des incrustations du, 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 du véhicule euh, numérique sur un film réaliste. Et on a pu donc le, le montrer et bluffer beaucoup de gens qui, euh, à l'époque, n'avaient pas pas vu de, de film de ce type et était persuadé que c'était un véhicule qui vraiment qui était en film. The following year, two other very audacious projects emerged from Renault's design team. The Argos, a Le Corbusier inspired roadster, and a range called Les Citadines, which offered advanced solutions to urban mobility. By the mid-1990s, empowered by the success of their production cars, the Twingo, Scenic and Espace, Renault wanted to surprise the world once again and developed a top-of-the-range vehicle, the Initial. It was an enormous ambition, I have to say, at the time, the high gamme of Renault, to recreate this high gamme to the French. It's a very, very beautiful car. It's a vehicle that has an interior of all beauty, que nous avons réalisé en association aussi avec Louis Vuitton. Donc on a cette association, association d'une marque française prestigieuse et bien sûr ceci va servir cette idée qui est que Renault se devait de sortir un véhicule très haut de gamme et un véhicule très haut de gamme à la française. By the end of the 1990s, concept cars became a truly inherent part of Renault's culture and an impressive menagerie of one-offs was building up. To mark the close of the millennium, Patrick Le Quémont once again showcased Renault's capacity for innovation by revealing its latest creation, the Avantime. Developed in collaboration with Matra, the Avantime was a project unlike any other. Avantime uh, arrive en 1999. Euh, il a été fait alors que le véhicule de série existait déjà, mais n'était pas encore sorti. Comme on savait que c'était un véhicule qui allait quand même marquer les esprits, on a décidé euh, d'en faire une version que j'appellerais plutôt un show-car, qui reprenait quasiment tout du véhicule de série, mais allait encore un peu plus loin dans les finitions, etc. Enabling their customers to get behind the wheel of a concept car, Renault confirmed its status as a créateur d'automobile the smallest gap between the whack job concept and the car which you can park in your drive was that between the, you know, the original concept, Avant Time, and the one which went into production. I mean, a truly, truly astonishing thing. It was just, it was conceived as a package, as a piece of sculpture, as a, as a, as a moving environment, which is totally pleasurable and totally, totally original. For the next decade of his career at Renault, 
Patrick Le Quemont expressed even more boldness with concept cars such as the Talisman in 2001, a stylistic tour de force. On Delios, a high-performance tourer in 2008. And in 2009, unveiled not only one, but a full range of electric cars. Fluence ZE, Kangoo ZE, Redo Tweezy and Zoe all of which are soon to be available to customers. The design team had become unstoppable, but in 2009, after 22 years as the head of Renault Design, Patrick Le Quemont retired, leaving behind an impressive legacy. I think Patrick Le Quemont, during his period at Renault, I mean, established you know, you know, the benchmark. These are the standards of conceptual excellence and you know, corporate daring, which, which everybody is now imitating. It really, really captured the audience and my god it was really like a brand signature direction for Renault. Je pense que il fait partie des des rares français euh, qui ont marqué l'histoire globale du design. 3 years on, Patrick Le Quemont and his Renault designers are still celebrated and admired all around the world. Reunited with one of his creations in Monaco today, He's here to support the very man that helped him turn some of Renault's dream cars into reality, Pier Angelo Maffiolo, from the Italian coach building company G Studio, which has been awarded Best Design Laboratory. Maffiodo and his team not only contributed to the success of Renault's first generation of concept cars, they also built the body of some of Renault's most contemporary creations, designed by Le Quemont's successor, Lorenz van den Acker. It's uh, with great pleasure that I uh, can assist to this uh, wonderful celebration of the real skill. And it's no coincidence that he's in Italy to find a real skill to make passionate cars. So I'm very pleased to be here with you. To receive the Louis Vuitton Award is certainly the ultimate accolade for the Italian coach builder. But to be reunited with one of his latest creations, Desir, is certainly making this moment very special. De la voir ici, dans les mêmes conditions que les sorties, pour moi, c'est vraiment la joie incroyable. Désir came off the Renault designer's drawing board in 2010 and represented the falling in love stage of Lorenz van den Acker's new design philosophy, the cycle of life. Elle est puissante, tracée, électrique, allongée sur le sol. Tous les charmes possibles d'une automobile qui doit, entre guillemets, charmer. Once you've fallen in love, you want to discover the world together. And that's why we created a crossover for you, for two people. It's called the Capture. C'est un véhicule off-road qui rompt franchement avec les codes du tout-terrain traditionnel. If all goes well with the couple, sooner or later there will be children, and so we developed a monospace with an interior that's quite interesting because it has a zone for the parents, very sensual, and it has a zone very original and ludique for the children. After creating a family, of course, you have to work, and therefore we created the Frenzy. It's a vehicle that's used for both work and family. With their first range of concept cars, Lorenz van den Acker's team has certainly ticked all the boxes and secured Renault's position at the top of the concept car game. Renault show their Frenchness. They are definitely one of the pioneers of showing what French design is. They're really not shy and they're always pushing the boundaries. And with Renault's latest concept car, the Alpine A1 1050, making her debut this year to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the legendary Berlinette, Renault is certainly not slowing down its creative pace. A vrai acte de bravoure, tel que l'industrie automobile en veut. Donc, à tous les niveaux, on est en train de faire quelque chose d'assez courageux. Based on Megan Trophy's technical platform and equipped with a Formula One style transmission, this concept car embodies Renault's passion for motorsports with a vengeance. The project Alpine A1150 was a very special project because for many people, uh, myself included, it's the most iconic of Alpines that existed. So it was something that had to be treated with respect. And at the same time, you need to give it a twist for the future. 
Euh, elle développe euh, presque 400 chevaux, elle monte à 280 ou 260 km h Enfin, c'est un monstre. In the last 25 years, Renault's concept cars have constantly broken new ground and have been fulfilling our wildest automotive dreams. Whether these objects of desire remain just an inspiration for innovative concepts or will become a reality, one thing is for sure. Renault will always push the limits of design. Renault, demain, dans ses concept cars, vous étonnera toujours. It's a good reason to be excited for the future because what you see through our concept cars, I hope that we will catch the spirit and you will refine it in the production cars to come.